Patient blood management has been another one of the programs that we've really done a lot of work with, and we're very fortunate to have uh, some tremendous clinicians at the helm of that work. And they have frankly brought forth a platform of conversation that we were not having. Patients that are transfused during the course of surgery tend to have higher rates of post-operative infections. So it's important to transfuse only when there's defined benefit. We went on this journey of a six-point plan of improving our blood management. We uh, leverage our electronic information systems to try to make sure that uh, physicians, when they're ordering transfusions are doing it according to the best available evidence and if they're using it against the best available evidence our electronic systems will alert them that they're deviating from best practices. Over the last five years we've seen about a hundred thousand unit less being transfused which translates to about ten and a half million dollars worth of savings and blood purchases. There's other savings that are more difficult to put a, a price tag on, such as reductions in infection rates. And we have applied this strategy even when we're talking about patients who refuse blood. The Jehovah's Witnesses are very unique in the fact that they do not accept red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, or plasma. We really had to learn a lot about the Jehovah's Witnesses in order to build a program that would support their personal choices. And then, frankly, had the wisdom through our clinical leadership to say, well, if it works for this group of people, why wouldn't it work for this group of people? Frankly, it's the same thing. Blood's not good unless you need it. You don't realize that, you know, until you do take care of the Jehovah's Witnesses is that you can take care of them, and they do quite well uh, without those transfusions. 